The digital inputs are quite simple. Drop them onto the diagram. Notice that they are auto incrementing. Each one can only appear once and it will assume the next in sequence. We can override that and change to any unused one. So in this case, we'll go for input six and we can run the simulation and check that everything works. So we can modify the simulation. We'll make input two. We're going to make it a momentary push button and we'll modify input six to be a frequency input. So now when we simulate, we can see on, off, but input two is momentary. So when I release the mouse button, it turns off again. And input six, we will set to one hertz. But since the frequency input just gives a one shot on every pulse, it's running much faster than the simulator can display. So we'll use a little trick here. We'll put, add in an up down counter to monitor the frequency simulation. So connect that to the count input and we'll reset from our momentary button up here. Expand this so we can see the count value. Run the simulation again. Set our frequency to one hertz and now we can see the count is incrementing. We'll hit the reset, count goes back to zero. And if we count at high frequency, so at five hertz, we can see the update rate is much faster. We can do all that in ladder mode as well. I pointed out that each input can only appear once. That's not a restriction on the ladder. So it's one of the reasons why the ladder can be a little bit easier to read on a larger diagram. So here we see input two appears on this rung, but it also appears on this rung. If you're not familiar with the logo options and the various input configurations, I recommend you watch the basic unit selection video where we go through this, help you select the right one for your application and explain some of the specifications for the digital inputs. A nice feature of the logo is the use of the cursor keys, which gives effectively an extra four inputs to the PLC. We can configure these to use the up key, the down key, left key and the right key. So we're going to set our counter reset. We'll use the down key. Since the cursor keys are already used for menu navigation, you press escape plus the cursor key to make it active. We'll run our simulator here and we'll count up a few cycles, hit the cursor key and observe that the counter resets to zero. We can set up an operator prompt for that so they know how to use the key. We'll add in a message text. The message text requires a logic one to keep it on. So we'll give that a status high. Run the simulation. And we can see the operator gets a nice little prompt here. One, two, three, four, press escape and down arrow and reset. If you're using the TDE remote display, the cursor keys on that will work in an OR fashion with the keys on the logo base unit. The logo TD and TDE have four function keys which you can use in the program. Very simple. 
we can simulate them on off on off to do something a little more interesting let's demonstrate a program we'll use a latching relay we'll name our function keys So we'll use function key one will be manual mode and function key two will be auto mode. Apply those, set and reset. So when block one comes on, we're in manual mode. Document as we go, run the simulation, set, reset, set, reset. Okay, we can add in a couple of message displays to show the mode. So using the message text function, The automatic mode would be the inverse of the manual mode. So if we double click the connection on that, we'll see the inversion dot appears. And we're going to do one other trick here is just to put change the color of the display. So we'll put a flag, we're going to display manual mode in orange. So from the special functions, we can see that the logo displays the amber backlight when M28 is on. Okay, that, and we will add in one for the white backlight in auto mode. We set M25, sets the logo display backlight. Run the simulation mode. We're, by default, we're in automatic mode. We'll switch on manual mode. And reset. Manual mode and reset. Nice.